Hello and welcome to Empowered Learning. This particular video is an example on how to multiply fractions. So we see we have three fractions here that we need to multiply together. What I'm going to do first is the one thing that you shouldn't do, and I'm going to show you why uh, you shouldn't do it. Um, we're still going to come, come up with the correct answer, but because it takes so long and we're actually redoing things, uh, you don't want to take this approach. So I want to make sure that you see this first before you see the thing that you're actually, well, not that you're actually supposed to do, but that um, it's suggested for you to do. Okay, so by definition, if we have two fractions and we need to multiply them, um, we're told to multiply a numerator with numerator and denominator with denominator. So we would end up with something like this. If we did that and applied it to this situation, this is what we would actually come out with. So doing the numerator first, we would have 9 times 5, which is 45. And then, of course, we would have to multiply the 45 times 8. If we did uh, 32 times 6, then, of course, if we come down here, we know 2 times 6 is 12. Carry the 1. Uh, 6 times 3 is 18 plus 1 is 19, so that will be 192 times 15. So from here, um, of course, we have to multiply 45 times 8. And so 45 times 8, 8 times 5 is 40. Put down the 0, carry the 4. 8 times 4 is 32. 32 plus 4 is 36. So we'll have 360 in the numerator. And then, um, once we're here, we have to do 192 times 15. And so, 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1. Uh, 5 times 9 is 45, plus 1, which is 46. Carry the 4. And then 5 times 1 is 5, plus 4, which is 9. And then, of course, after that, uh, we would have to put a zero here and then multiply one times two, nine, one, which gives us, uh, sorry, 192. And then of course we have to add all that together. So 960 plus 1920, uh, zero here, two plus six is eight, nine plus nine is 18, carry the one, two. So you see, we'll, we'll get that as an answer. Now, do you also realize that since both of these numbers are even, that we're going to have to reduce this? And so we have a whole lot of reducing to do to actually get down to the answer. The reason why I wanted to show you this first is because see how much work we've done. Um, even if you did it in the calculator, you see how much work you've done just to get here. And now you have to go um, reduce all of this again. So um, without going any further, uh, you're going to see that when you do this, you create a lot of work for yourself. OK, so um, what we want to do is find a shorter, more efficient way of doing this. So um, I'm going to erase all of this now and actually show you uh, the way that we should approach this. So now, um, instead of multiplying everything together here, Notice that we have some fractions uh, not in the current form, but we can reduce. And so uh, we know that we can reduce because of how uh, this looks. And so uh, when we look at this, we look at all of this as having certain factors that are in the numerator divided by certain factors that are in the denominator. And so when we look at it this way, if you notice here, 5 and 15 have a common factor of 5, okay? We also know that 6 and 9 have a common factor of 3. And we also know that 6 and 8 have a common factor of 2. And we know that 8 and 32 have a common factor of 8. So you see that we, we have a lot of things that have common factors amongst the numerator and denominator. And so I'm going to rewrite this in a way to where you clearly see 
the easiest thing to reduce, and then we're going to reduce them. After I do that, then I'm going to do this the short way um, once you actually see what's going on. So let's uh, take the things that are easiest first. So we know that if 9 times 5 times 8 is true, then what we could do is we could switch this 5 and this 8 around. And we know that because of the commutative property of multiplication. So uh, if we did that, I could rewrite this this way. So this would be 9 times uh, 8 times 5. Okay. And so uh, we also know that in the denominator here, um, I could uh, switch the way that this looks, but I'm not going to do that for right now. So we're just going to write it like this. So now, um, if you notice here, we have 5 over 15. Okay. I also know that 8 and 32 have a common factor of 8, so I can switch the 32 and the 6 around here. So if I rewrite everything, it looks like this. 6 times 32 times 15. Okay. So now at this point, because I know from the definition of a uh, multiplying fractions here, that right now uh, what I currently have here is in this form. I could break it out into this form. And if I do that, then that looks like 9 over 6 times 8 over 32 times 5 over 15. Okay. And so now that we're in this form, it actually makes it easy for us to reduce. Now, uh, we know that 9 is 3 times 3. And we also know that 6 is 3 times 2. We know uh, here uh, that 8 will just keep it that way because down in the denominator, we know that um, 32 is 8 times 4. So really, we could just keep the numerator as 8 times 1. And then from here, we'll say 5 is 5 times 1 and 15 is 5 times 3. And so now with that, you see that anywhere where we have a common factor in numerator and denominator, it reduces to 1. So here we have 3 divided by 3. That reduces to 1. We have 8 divided by 8. That reduces to 1. And we have 5 divided by 5. That reduces to 1. So now what remains is 1 times 3, which is 3, times 1 times 1, which is 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1, okay? So um, once we do all this, the only thing that's different here is that we have a 3 times all these 1s, so we just end up with 3 in our numerator. For the denominator, we have 1 times 2, which is 2, and then uh, 2 times 1, which is 2, uh, 2 times 4, which is 8, and then uh, 8 times 1, which is 8, and 8 times 3, which is 24. And so we're there. Okay. So um, one other thing that we could have done here, do you see how we have a common factor of 3 here and 3 there? So we could have taken care of that, but I'm actually going to do it in this step. So now that we have all of this, we know that 3 is 3 times 1, and 24 is 3 times 8. And so again, we have a common factor of 3, just like how we saw it there, that reduces to 1. And our final answer here is just 1 eighth. Okay? So the reason I kind of did it the long way like this is just to show you why um, we're actually able to reduce things. And so our answer ends up being 1 eighth when we do that. So now what I'm going to do is erase all of this and do it the, the shorter way now that we know um, all this stuff in here where we can move fractions around um, we don't necessarily have to do that now so we can just kind of reduce from where we are and work with it that way so I'm going to erase this and then do it again so now let's uh, go ahead and 
see what we have. We know here that 5 and 15 have a common factor of 3. So 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 15 three times. Okay. We also know that 8 and 32 have a common factor of 8 because 8 times 4 is 32. So 8 goes into 8 once, 8 goes into 32 four times. We also see that 6 and 3 have a common, uh, sorry, 6 and 9 have a common factor of 3 because 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 2 is 6. So 3 goes into 6 two times, 3 goes into 9 three times. And so what we have left is 3 times 1 times 1 over 4 times 2 times 3. And of course here we see that 3 um, goes in, uh, well, 3 divided by 3 is 1. So all that reduces to 1. And so now we see in the numerator all we have left is a 1. And in the denominator we just have uh, 4 times 2, which is 8. And that is our answer there. So we'll just come in and type in that answer, and that should be what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and erase what we have, and we can type in our answer. So here we can just select our fraction palette. If you want, do 1, 8, and then we just select the answer here. And I probably need to scroll down to do that. Yeah. And there we go. So that's how we take multiple fractions and multiply them together. And again, I want to stress that what I did last is what you should do. But I wanted to show you first <clears throat> what you probably shouldn't do because it takes a long time. And uh, the more work you do, the more you're prone to probably doing errors. So I hope this helped. Take care.